In this video, we're going to look at a very special relation uh, defined on a group. So here's the setup. So G here will be a group. And H will be a subgroup of G. And we're going to define a relation. So define a relation as follows. Let's call it that. So we'll define that relation by saying x is related to y if x, y inverse is an element of h. And there is a really big key result. So we'll call it a proposition. And the result says that this is an equivalence relation on G. So let's go ahead and prove that. Let's prove it carefully. So to show it's an equivalence relation, this uh, relation that we defined, we have to show it's reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So we'll start by proving reflexivity. So suppose X is in G then we need to show that x times x inverse is an h. So then, x, x inverse, well, that's the identity element, which is certainly an h, because h is a subgroup. So this is because h is a subgroup. So therefore, x is related to x, and since this holds for all x and g, we have that our relation is actually reflexive. So that shows reflexivity. Now we have to show that this relation is in fact transitive. So suppose that we have x, y, and g, and x is related to y. We have to show that y is related to x. Well, this means that x, y inverse is an h. That's what it means for x to be related to y, that x times y inverse is an h. We have to show that y is related to x, so we have to show that y, x inverse, is an h. And it is. So then y, x inverse that's equal to the inverse of x, y inverse. I mean, the inverse of a product of a group. And this is certainly an h because h is closed under inverses, right? It's a subgroup, so it's closed under inverses. So this shows that our relation is in fact symmetric. So let me actually finish this by writing so thus, y is related to x, and this holds for all x, y, and g, so our relation is symmetric. The last thing to show is that our relation is transitive, and then we're done, and we've shown it's an equivalence relation. So lastly, suppose that x is related to y, and y is related to z, for some x, y, and z in g. So this means, well, since x is related to y, then x, y inverse is an h. And since y is related to z, this means that y, z inverse is an h. And we need to show that x is related to z, so we need to show that x times z inverse is an h, and indeed it is. So then, x times z inverse, we can write that as x e z inverse, where e is the identity, and we can write e as y inverse y z inverse, and we can use associativity a few times here, and write this as x y inverse y z inverse, 
And this is certainly an H because H is closed under the group operation. So this is because H is closed under the group operation. Right, because this here is an H, this here is an H. H is a subgroup, so it's closed under the group operation, so the product is also an H. So this means, or this shows, that X is related to Z. Thus, and since it holds for all X, Y, and Z, thus our relation is transitive. So we've proven that our relation is reflexive, symmetric, and transitive. So therefore, our special relation is an equivalence relation. on G. And that concludes the, the proof. So what is this for? Well, there's a construction. Uh, there's these things we're going to create and they're called cosets. So definition. So let G be a group. Let G be a group. And H a subgroup of G. And we're going to define a right coset, a right coset of H in G. So we're going to write down what exactly is a right coset of H and G. Well, it is a subset of G of the form. Well, it looks like this. Let me scroll down so we can write a little bigger. So H, and then you put a little G next to it. And this is the set of all the elements that look like HG, such that H is in H. So that's what we mean by a right coset, okay? Where little G is some fixed element of capital G. So that's that's a coset. Let's look at a, a quick example. So a really simple one. So let's take um, G to be the set of real numbers, or the group of real numbers, under the operation of addition. So here the operation is just is just regular addition. And we'll take a subgroup H H will be the set of integers. It's certainly a subgroup of the real numbers under uh, the basic operation of addition. And for example, a coset here could be, you could take Z and then add maybe one half. That's an element of the real numbers, right? It's an element of G. Using additive notation this time, right? Here we had like a multiplication, so times G here, it's a plus. And so this is the set containing the elements, say, um, negative three halves, negative one half, one half, three halves, etc. So this would be a right coset. A right coset. So there's one more result that we need uh, to go further. So proposition So let R be an equivalence relation on S. Then for all S1, S2, and S, we have that S1 is related to S2 if and only if the equivalence class of S1 is equal to the equivalence class of S2. Let's go ahead and give a really, really quick proof of this. Um, so let's do it. So proof. 
We'll start by assuming that S1 is related to S2. So suppose S1 is related to S2. And we have to show that the equivalence class of S1 is equal to the equivalence class of S2. So we have to show they're subsets of each other. So take, take some Y in the equivalence class of S1. And that means that Y is related to S1. Now, since Y is related to S1 and S1 is related to S2, we have that Y is related to S2 by transitivity. Transitivity. And this means that Y is in the equivalence class of S2. So this means that Y is in the equivalence class of S2. So we've shown that the equivalence class of S1 is contained in the equivalence class of S2. So now we have to prove the other direction. So take Y in the equivalence class of S2. And so this means that Y is related to S2. And now we have to show that Y is in the equivalence class of S1. So let's see what we have. We have that S1 is related to S2, and we have that Y is related to S2. So let's start maybe by using symmetry on this piece here. So since S1 is related to S2, we have S2 related to S1 by symmetry. And now we can invoke transitivity. So since Y is related to S2 and S2 is related to S1, I'll put parentheses here and an arrow. This implies that Y is related to S1 by transitivity. Transitivity. And so this means that Y is in the equivalence class of S1. So this shows, so this shows that the equivalence class of S2 is contained in the equivalence class of S1. So therefore, we've shown the containment both ways. The equivalence class of S1 is equal to the equivalence class of S2. So that was, I believe, the long direction of the proof. I haven't done this problem in a while. Now we have to assume that the equivalence classes are the same, and we have to show that S1 is related to S2. So let's do it. So suppose this time that the equivalence class of S1 is equal to the equivalence class of S2. Okay, and we have to show that S1 is related to S2. So then, well, S1, that's in the equivalence class of S1. By reflexivity, it's not empty. And this is equal to the equivalence class of S2. So S1 is in the equivalence class of S2. Let me write that down again. So S1 is in the equivalence class of S2. Well, by definition of equivalence class, that means that S1 is related to S2. Wow, that was really easy. <laughs> so, and that completes that completes the the proof. So, I hope this video has helped. Um, yeah, that's it.